Welcome all. It's my pleasure today to be joined by Member of the Turkish Parliament, Garo Paylan. So, Mr. Garo Paylan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, as you're well aware, it's less than a month till Turkish voters will go to elect both a president, a new president, and a parliament. Several opinion polls are showing that it's going to be quite a close contest between incumbent president Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the opposition uh, coalition led by Kemal Kilishtaroglu. Um, the party you represent in parliament, the HDP, which is a left-leaning party supported by numerous marginalized groups in Turkey, uh, such as the Kurds, uh, will not be fielding a presidential candidate in this election. Uh, a lot of people were confused about this. Can you explain why exactly the HDP decided not to field a presidential candidate? <laughs> Because uh, the opposition camp, the six-party ta table, uh, had only 40% of the votes, but we needed 50 plus one vote. And we have around 15% of the votes, uh, my party, my coalition. And if we had a candidate, the, uh, the Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu uh, would not win in the first round. That was for sure. And it was Erdogan's game. And we decided not to have a candidate. Instead, we spoke with Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, and he told he would be the democratic uh, democratic uh, uh, president of Turkey. And we decided not to have a candidate and to end this game in the first round. It it is mm -hmm. uh, it is really a sacrifice. But no, we uh, we said we are going to win together. But not yeah. only the uh, presidential elections. We want to win the par parliamentary elections as well. We will be the, I guess, the main opposition party and we will be the kingmaker and we will, we want the political atmosphere to, uh, we want to turn the political atmosphere to the democratic way it, because it was the authoritarian way and with the authoritarian way, all of us lost and with the democratic way, we want to win together. Mm -hmm. I was just on a trip to Istanbul and some were of the opinion that the CHP-led coalition, which is led in turn by Kilish Darohlu, um, could win the election. And what that would mean for Turkey is perhaps a Turkey that is closer to the West, a Turkey with a less aggressive foreign policy, a more democratic Turkey, a less authoritarian Turkey. When you think about the prospect of a Kilish Darohlu administration, what do you think? What do you hope for? You know, Erdogan is an authoritarian leader, and with the authoritarian way and nationalist way, not only the Turks lost, Armenians, you no know, Arabs, you know, you know uh, Greeks, all of us lost because of this these vicious circles in the in the region. Uh, with Greece, let's say Turkey and Greece are both sides are buying weapons. Instead, in, instead of doing social policies to their people. And Turkey, as you know, supported Azeris in the South Caucasus issue and uh, all the South Caucasus uh, in, in the region, all of us lo lost. And in Syria as well, there is no solution and everybody is losing. And if we can turn back to democracy in Turkey, and because Turkey is a key country in the region, I guess it is going to affect uh, the peace processes in the South Caucasus, in the Arab region, and in the Aegean Sea as well. So uh, we, this will be a turning point, uh, 14th of May, and uh, we are trying to uh, uh, we are trying to really end this authoritarian era in mm -hmm. uh, on in 14th of May. And you know, uh, you kind of mentioned it, but um, there was talk that. Kilish Darohu and the opposition have already been talking about, you know, a less aggressive foreign policy if they come to power. You know, there's talk of Thor's rapprochement with Syria, Egypt, Iraq, Greece, and even Armenia. Do you think that for the Armenian side, it may be actually easier to work with a Kilish Darohu administration when it comes to normalizing relations as opposed to the current Erdogan administration? who has, may I add, a very close relationship with Azerbaijani President Tilam Aliyev. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, I don't think it is going to be one, one way. We are not going to be uh, a democratic country at all. 
but I guess things will be better because in that coalition, we have another nationalist party, which is the good party, E party, and they are also nationalist. And, but you no, know, I guess the majority of the parliament will ask for democracy because everybody lost, the economy is suffering and uh, everybody is uh, losing in Turkey. I guess Turkey uh, needs to turn back to democracy and it's going to affect everywhere. Just like in the first years of AKP, which was in the first years of 2000s, uh, Turkey was on the way to European Union and we had reforms and it affected everywhere, everywhere, not only Turkey, it affected the, Egypt, uh, the, the relations with Greece and other countries as well. I guess it is going to be the same as well. But we, we shouldn't expect that everything is going to be wonderful after the 20th of May. It is going to depend on our struggle for democracy. So we will be re ready. We should be ready, uh, everyone, including Armenia, Greece, and Syria, to getting back to to thinking about you know 15th of May and uh, to have good relations with Turkey. Uh, it is going to help Turkey as well. The Democrats who are st struggling for democracy. It is going to help all of us because uh, we need to end these vicious circles, which is causing uh, the, the loss of all the people in the region. And, um, you know, not that long ago, in 2019, the CHP won mayoral elections in Istanbul and in Ankara. This sent political shockwaves through Turkey. But there is this question of is Turkey a democracy or not? Do you hope? What do you think about the prospect of these elections being free and fair? <laughs> it is not going to be a free, free and fair. We are going to have a race, but the referee is not fair at all. The higher electoral court is, will not be fair, but we will be at the ballot and we are going to defeat the referee as well. We need to defeat them as well. The, we, we are going to be at the ballot and we are going to count the votes and the, the, we will see the votes are the majority the, who wants change, and we will guarantee that. But the referee is not uh, fair at all. It was not fair in 2019 local elections, but we 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 were the winner uh, despite an unfair referee in 2019, and we will be the winner in these elections. I'm sure about it. But we might see some provocations. That is our concern. But we are just asking from the government not to dare to those provocations. Okay, and many people in Armenia, but across the global Armenian community, were shocked to learn that you will not be running as a parliamentary candidate in these elections. Um, can you explain uh, why that, how that decision was come to, please? Uh, you know, uh, of course, everybody was expecting that. Uh, no, everybody was expecting for me to run again. But we have a rule in our party. We, everyone in our party can be an MP for two terms. After that two terms, you need to wait for one, one turn. But this is not. This doesn't mean that I will be out of the political area. I, I, I will again be active in all the you know, uh, peace processes and democratic you know, processes as well. I will be in the political uh, area, area and I will act. Nobody should worry about it, but I will not be in the parliament. That is a shock I know for the Armenian world, all over the world. I have thousands of mails, emails and telephone calls. You should have run again, but it didn't happen, unfortunately. But don't know. We shouldn't worry about it. I will again be in this struggle for peace between Turkey and Armenia, and for the dem I will be in this struggle for democ for a democratic Turkey because only a democratic Turkey can solve all the problems in the South Caucasus, in the agency, and all the region. So I will be in this struggle uh, forever. No, nobody should worry at, about it. Okay, and uh, finally, Mr. Paylan. There is a perception that Erdogan's 20-year rule of Turkey has been marked by authoritarianism, by an aggressive foreign policy, interventions, Islamism, polarization, the suppression of human rights and democracy. Others say he emancipa emancipated the poor and religious. He transformed Turkey's uh, economy and turned it into a regional power. In your opinion, if defeated, what will President Erdogan's legacy be? 
Yeah, President Erdogan only eight years ago could be the leader who have turned Turkey into a democracy because we had the peace process with, with the Kurds. We were speaking about European Union process and we were speaking about you no know, uh, peace in the South Caucasus as well. Turkey was on the way to democracy, but because of the because of the power struggle with the Gulenists. He, tur- he had a new coalition partner, which was the Nationalist Party. When he followed th- that path, he uh, lost everything. He lost his power and Turkey lost everything. We, we, uh, we lost, uh, uh, people lost their welfare and freedoms and you know, everything, almost everything. So uh, this, is a, this will be a terrible legacy for Erdogan. He, he had a chance, but he will, uh, he will step down with a terrible economy, with a ter- terrible democracy. And uh, so his legacy will not be remembered uh, very well. But uh, no, what we want to ask from him to, for his last 20 days to not to dare to do new provocations, to end his legacy uh, without you know, any provocations. That is what we want from him. Uh, we want him to step down peacefully. That is okay. the last uh, request from him. Mr. Garopaylan, as always, thank you very much. Very insightful. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Civil Now.